Welcome folks. I wanted to give a little update on the Navajo Linguistics Project. So this is me, Henri, and I speak Navajo. This project actually has been approved for a proposal, like it's a funded part of a funded proposal through the Arizona State University Quantum Collaborative. And if you go to their website, which is the quantumcollaborative.org, you'll see that there's a description for what the, con the quantum collaborative is about and the purpose that it serves. There's a huge section on training the quantum workforce, so workforce development for, for quantum technology industries. Companies that work on quantum sensors, quantum networks for communication technology and quantum computing and things like that. Regardless, it's it's a great it's a great effort and this repository was not intended for that purpose originally. Just by chance it, it got roped into this. <laughs> so, but it's a good thing. <clears throat> and the other thing is there is a way of thinking in Navajo. There's a whole thought process lined out for how how to describe things in Navajo. And for the most part, you dis when you describe it in Navajo, there is a description that exists typically in the term. I drop my glasses here. <clears throat> so, like like for example, I, I wrote this one for quantum mechanics a while back. But I have not written the English translation for this. And you'll notice there's an English word here, well, German word here. German German surname. <laughs> Schrodinger. So if, if someone has a name, we keep the name original in Navajo. But names for places and names for, for everything else. We'll, we'll give a Navajo description, but generally, if it's someone's name, we we, we keep it original. That's why you'll notice Schrodinger's name here. Anyways, there is one here that I I was able to create an English translation for, and originally it was just written in Navajo. And for for one example, I will show is the term for desert. So. Desert, it's just two syllables in English, but there's no description in those two syllables. <laughs> well, in Navajo, there's a description. So the, the term for desert in Navajo is Do Nidahastin Go. The root word is Nahastin. So Hastin is right here. And then Do Da is another word for no. But the thing is, if you string that together with the root word and a couple of other descriptors, then it becomes a place with no rain. A place of no rain. There's virtually no rain there, technically. But we just say that there's no rain in this place. And that means desert. So that's the term for desert. It's so strung together in, in one, one whole thing. Well, it, it comes in two parts, but still, it's, it's considered one term for desert. That's that's one example. And you can do more or less the same thing with, with quantum mechanics. Because there's, there's an inherent description for everything in Navajo, we can describe what something is doing and what it means, the significance, the semantics, the, the relations, the historical historical aspects of, of whatever it is that thing that you're trying to describe. So of course we got one historical figure here already, Schrodinger. And then there's like mathematics, there's numbers, there's equations, quantifications associated with that that are very deeply studied. And then there's like Ahodzil. Adzil is the root word here that means strength. Something that this how strong is it? How strong is, is something? Bitzil. We say like 
the, his, his or her strength, their strength, that person's strength, or or that that machine's strength. How strong is it? Or in this case, we're talking about how strong is something inside of an atom. Like, what what is the strength of the 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 the, the, the glue? That keeps the atoms that, that that can glue from one atom to the next. So, how how do you describe that in terms of energy? And how you how do you describe it in terms of like numbers and intervals, things like that? So that's that's kind of what this is saying. All right, and this is what what I've gotten so far. I also have a small team. I've, I've trained two people under my quantum hardware team at the University of Minnesota. So a little shout out to them. <laughs> and this is for them. So basically I, I translate something in Evo and I want them to have some context for how to write in Evo or at least how, how to generate the, the, the typed out characters on a keyboard based off of a handwriting. So the handwriting is something provided by me here in this link. This is only accessible to my team, but the rest of the rest of this repository is open access. Yep. And then recently actually I I did have the thought of possibly having this contribute to uh, Navajo Braille because the thing is there are multiple ways to learn things and multiple ways to describe things and, and, and express them. And there's so many ways to do it. So for if you're doing things through sight, you're learning it through like visuals, then it might be like through 3D models and animations. So Blender is very useful for this. And then for auditory means, like you could create tones, uh, something something that that has a certain sound or or in this case if you're listening to somebody describe something in a, a certain language or when you break down the language into into terms that are more easily digest digestible but digestible but terms that you can string together that it will accurately describe what is happening then that is that is also included in the auditory means of learning full immersion and that also includes being able to feel for something so in this case there's this it, it, as, as I found there's this thing called a, the Nemeth the Nemeth system it's, it's like a braille it's a form of braille mathematics and I, I looked deeper into this and there's actually a whole section on Navajo braille code and Mathematics in Navajo, I would say, unless you're describing it in in words, then you could describe it with Navajo Braille. But the numbers themselves, we we can pretty much read numbers as they are. So like a one is a one in Navajo looks like the number one in English. It's the same thing. But the description of the number one is well it's different in Navajo compared to English <laughs> so 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 with that in mind there there are symbols like Greek symbols that are used in mathematics there are mathematical operators mathematical symbols like integrals derivatives like logical operators things like this that exist in Braille we can write that in Navajo and there's advanced math that can be described using Braille. So I was like, well, this is something I would like to explore as well. It also was fascinating to me because as you as you learn from multiple multiple pathways, you also can contribute to the scientific community in general, and you can also provide a way to lower the barrier to entry into a field that is not only lucrative, but 
it's something you can make a living out of. You, you can make a living working in the field of, of quantum technology, quantum computing, studying quantum mechanics, mm, using quantum technology to, to solve certain problems, uh, to, and even working on the hardware, which is something I do, developing nano devices that u utilize quantum mechanics for better efficiency, sustainability, things like that. You know, you, you can satisfy your own curiosity and so forth. But here, in this case, the language and the thought process for developing these terms, at least in Navajo, you get an even deeper understanding of the language itself as well, because when you have a better understanding of the language, you can understand these models. You can better understand what the device is doing inside of inside of a say uh, a computing unit so this is this is a for example a magnetic tunnel junction it's a little device it's a nanomagnet and we use these as memory cells so this thing can is if you build it clean like a, with a very high quality then it will have this really clean atomic structure of metal and we can store one bit of we can store like maybe yeah like one bit of information inside of this memory cell and one bit just this one nanomagnet is good enough for that yep it's it's able to do that you could do one or two bits even actually <clears throat> yeah you can flip this you can use it as a switch like if it's it's if it's in one if the magnet is is pointing in one direction and then we count that as as, as like as a zero and if the magnet is pointing in the opposite direction then we can count that as a one so that's like you have some some information associated or assigned to this one little nanomagnet based off of what direction the magnet is pointing and you can change the direction of the magnet by by having another piece of metal underneath the magnet that can that can influence the magnet without without using a whole lot of energy in this case depending on how advanced the material is you can increase the efficiency of that switching mechanism and so what this thing is called is a spin orbit torque. So that the efficiency of that switch lies in this mechanism called a spin orbit torque. And this is a physics term, but this, this whole device, we call it a spin orbit torque magnetic tunnel junction. And so this is inherently a quantum device that is used at room temperature. But the thing is, you could even put it at, you could even put it at uh, millikelvin temperatures and It'll function the same way, but with just a greater efficiency because the the amount of dissipation is, is virtually non-existent. When I say virtually non-existent, I mean it's there is is very little dissipate heat dissipation in this device because you're not using a high current to to drive the switch to to make the switch do anything. You don't need a whole lot of energy to do it, which is good, and so you get more efficiency. And also, like the 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 the, the, the way the atoms are situated, it will become much easier. Like you can increase the efficiency based off of like the conductivity of the of the metal and, and things like that. And then you you could well, there's a whole. This is a whole field, spintronics, where, where people study it. But anyways, magnetism is inherently quantum, is all I'm saying. And this is something that, that we can even use in quantum technology so that we can store classical bits of information of, say, well, sampling pulse, sampling inf sampled information that is recorded out of, let's say, some analog waveform that is used to drive a analog nanoelectronics 
that is inside of a, a of, of uh, let's see a microwave quantum device such as well quantum circuits made of Josephson junction arrays and things like that anyways regardless we have we have blender well I have blender and I've been working this more this I've been spending more time this summer collecting techniques on how to use Blender more efficiently to create 3D models like this one. So the thing is, you can string together these these components. You can eyeball it. You don't have to make precise measurements. And so long as you can make a visual representation in 3D, you can export it and then put it into either a PowerPoint or a book or what have you. Then you can label the different parts in Navajo, and then you can translate that into English uh, uh, as you wish. And then the more you, the more we build this whole context together, then we can start to form more and more documentation. You can turn it into a whole book. In this case, I have like some latex based script for for writing all of this text here some people call it latex others call it latex or latex i guess there's different pronunciations based off based on who you talk to but but the there's a text file here tx and it's located right here there's a source file for the the book well i would call it more like a booklet of of the motivation for this project and also, well, the figures that are written in there. And it's Creative Commons. I, I label it as Creative Commons because this is I want this to be open access. Yeah. So that's that's as far as we've gotten so far. I did make a Unicode for this, and this is just a sample of the table. The full table I wrote in two different formats. One is a markdown, which has a table like this one and then another one I made in the Excel file there's also some examples how to for how to do it and use it in Python scripts there's one I have it's it's an actual just a whole PDF a full PDF table <laughs> so actually it's in, in multiple formats but the entire Navajo characters all of the Navajo characters that, that exist we can write them with the Unicode and this is important because, well, if you go to Google Translate, let's say I go to Google Translate, you're not going to find Navajo on here. Navajo does not exist on Google Translate. Even if I just type the letter in, there's only four languages on here that start with the letter in on Google Translate. And Navajo is not one of them. As well as many other Native American languages, they're, they're, just, not, they're just not on here. Because the scripts that are used to write the language... There's likely no Unicode table available for them, like what, what I have created here. And this is to make that easier, so that you can create certain markings and certain groupings of characters much more easily. That's what this is for. And let's see here. Mm, I also have some audio samples of me talking in Navajo. There's some in Latin, with Latin script, which is what the English language is based off of. And then there's ones in the Cyrillic script. Because the sounds are the same, but the, the way you write it can come in different forms. Like, like we don't use Cyrillic in the Navajo tribe whatsoever, but someone was curious enough to, to try an, a, an attempt using Cyrillic script and the phonetics in Cyrillic to make some equivalent version uh, of the, the sounds that we make so like Billa Ashtla'i it's like the five fingered people or five five those, those with five fingers Billa <laughs> Ashtla'i it's like all the all the people all the folks with five fingers not necessarily exclusive to those with five fingers but that's just how we describe in Navajo is how we describe human beings. We, we, we by default, have five fingers. <laughs> um, but the other thing is, 
Villa Astlaid also. You can s it's the same pronunciation in Cyrillic. And this is obviously for your curiosity, if you want to satisfy that, you can read this. And then let me see the whole vowel network here. There's some sounds that come with it and all that. Let's see here. What else? Mm. Oh, and then there's like a Navajo Wikipedia, and there's Navajo Wikimedia. Well, Navajo Wiktionary. Wiki. Yeah. And there's different topics, but the the thing is for for Wikipedia and Navajo more or less everything that's written here, you, you you would have to be able to understand Navajo to to navigate this. Otherwise you'd have to kind of guess from the pictures. <laughs> so like let me see here. This looks like New York. It, this is a New York. This this is the One World Trade Center. Yes. Oh, actually, it's is a is an English description here of the picture itself. But the everything else is in Navajo. It looks like. Oh, okay. So that's just the link. Never mind. So Kenyotra, there's there's a Okay, so that's another link to something else. That's not actually the description of the world, the One World Trade Center. That's different. Actually, it's right here. Mm -hmm. Actually, none of this is the description for the World Trade One World Trade Center. It's it's just a picture of the World One World Trade Center, but it's not. It's not the description specifically for the tower. This this is the description of New York City. Right here. Kenyotrates ah. Okay. Yeah, so it doesn't say anything about the One World Trade Center. It just it just describes New York and talks about New York and where it's located. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyways, so that's that's on here. Then I clicked on this. Okay, there there is Navajo Wiktionary here. There's some categories that you might see. There's even technology, but the the topics are very limited. So like if I click on, say computing, it's it's not going to say a whole lot. So I can click on internet, and it might just talk about, say, uh, websites. And that's about it. It's very limited. Now it's all spinny. Now, and then there's some etymology here. Now it's all the book. We also describe this as paper, like a collection of papers or paper itself. We do, we can even say now it's all just for paper. And then bih belongs to something, belongs to somebody, something. Ani is face. Yep, that's pretty, that's accurate. And you can also use this to describe Facebook, apparently. Face the knee. <laughs> this is funny to me. But it's it makes sense, though. It makes sense. As an Ambrose figure. Wiki. Wiki. B. Wiki. B. D. Ya. So this is pretty much... A Navajo pronunciation of the word Wikipedia. That's that's what it is. <laughs> we do the same thing for like Washington. We say Washington. It's that's like a Navajo way of saying Washington. So so like names of places and names of of certain organizations or websites in this case. It's usually just given a Navajo pronunciation, like a Navajo twist of the, of the pronunciation. But usually, for everything else, we, we try not to borrow 
the English terms for the earth. We we can virtually we can virtually translate every everything in Navajo. That's how it works because Navajo is inherently a descriptive language. Everything is descriptive, as I showed. I, I was showing that here. Don go. So place with no rain. And actually the intention is it's not that there literally is no rain there. There is some rain, but we just say there's no rain because technically there's virtually no rain. There's it might rain sometime, but most of the time there is no rain. And that means desert. So like I said, we, we can make descriptions for all kinds of things in Navajo, regardless of how technical it is, including quantum as as new as quantum technology is to the world, we can describe it. It is possible and this is a great start. So thank you for tuning in. You can look at my little OBS recording software. <laughs> Alright. See you around.